Yeah, so the integration B was held a few days ago, obviously, before the end of term. I thought I would go through the answers um, to or, or the intended solutions to the integrals from the semifinals and the final. Not going to go any earlier than that because uh, there's too many of them to do. Um, for people who weren't at this integration B, these integrals are not meant to be that hard. Um, they all have tricks in them that mean that you can do them relatively quickly if you spot the trick. I, I wasn't really interested in watching people struggle for five minutes trying to find the right substitution or trying to get through partial fractions or any other really long-winded trick. And I also just wanted every integral to be solved. I didn't want really that many zero zeros to happen. So anyway, let's go through some of these intended solutions. This is the first of the first semi-final integrals. Um, the trick here, I mean, you can write this all in terms of cos and sine, and then it, it gets down to an integral of um, like a cosec, I believe. Um, of a, with a double angle formula trick in there as well. But the intended solution um, is you just write this cos squared on the top, which of course means making it a, sign, uh, a sec squared. And if this cot goes on the bottom, it makes it a tan. And then of course we can recognize f dashed over f. So the answer is log of tan of x. Um, and yeah, that was the first one uh, done. The second one, um, this is a double angle formula. The half here gives a way that we should be using the double angle formula because of course this is two sine x cos x. And then you can use the half to get rid of that. And now this is one of those nice times where you want to use parts, but you want to group up the right terms such that parts is easiest to pull off. So if I group the sine of x with the e to the cos of x um, together, then those two things can be integrated because it's reverse chain rule, and then I can leave the cos of x on its own and, and make that the other thing. So I'll, I'll take the cos of x and I'll leave it alone over here, and I'll differentiate it over here, and then I'll integrate sine x e to the cos x, which integrates, I think, to minus e to the cos x. Um, because cos differentiates to minus sine, if I'm not mistaken. And then we'll, um, like I said, differentiate cos x down here for sine x with a minus, so I'll bear that in mind. We've also got the minus from the integral of the other two bits, and then we've also got the minus from the minus integral that you put in the middle. So I think three minuses makes a minus, and then finally this integrates nicely with another minus to make this, I think, in total will be our answer. Now 3c, um, so you, I think you're supposed to spot here that 4x squared can become 2x all squared, and then you can put the 2 at the front, which just saves you a bit of effort. Um, we can also write the over x as 1 over x, like this, because now we can spot that we have a function with its derivative sitting next to it. Um, so this just integrates to, I think, um, log of 2x all squared. It's tempting to think that there's another 2 that goes somewhere, but this itself here differentiates to 2 over 2x, and the 2 cancels itself out to just leave with this. So the 2 comes down, becomes this 2, and I think this is all we need there. And um, I should say at this point that plus c is is not necessary. That wasn't the rules, I think. This is the only integral that actually just straight up came from, from an A-level paper, um, just because I think it's a really nice integral. You need to spot, or you don't need to, but the, by far and away the easiest way of doing this is to spot that this is a difference of two squares on top of two minus root x into two plus root x. And then you can cancel these two, and then this really easily integrates to, I hope, uh, what I've got written down there. If any of these answers are wrong, by the way, um, then, uh, then great, I don't care. Uh, this one, uh, just a really nice integral. I, I gave this one here just to try and be helpful because I think the trick is quite hard to spot if you don't put it here. And um, what you're supposed to spot is that both of these ones could be written as tan pi over four. Um, and therefore we can write this as tan pi over four plus tan x into one minus tan pi over four tan pi tan x, which is just the compound angle form of the tan. So this is the same as tan into x plus pi over four. And of course you should know that the integral of tan is log sec. So it's, and this of course just differentiates to one, so it doesn't really matter. So it just becomes log sec of that thing. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's that done. If we write this in more sensible ways, uh, one over cot is tan and one over cos squared is sec squared. And then we can hopefully notice that this bracket perfectly differentiates into this bracket. So the answer will be a half of this bracket squared. And uh, again, nice, easy to spot as long as you don't, you know, expand this out, which is, of course, um, what what your, what the, the, the trick is, is trying to help you to avoid. Um, next one here. Uh, so uh, this is again integral by parts, uh, but we need to think carefully about which things we're going to put together. This minus can be very helpfully used to make this into a log x because it's minus over here to the power minus one that's flips to an x. So do that first. And then this can be one part and this can be the other. So I think we're going to, obviously, we don't really want to integrate log of x. So we'll integrate this one a couple of times, which this 2026 is helpful for because this just integrates to 2000 x to the 2026 itself leave this alone and then differentiate this for one over x and integrate this again for this term um, and then put the minus integral in the middle. And now this is just x to the power of 2025. So it integrates to x to the power of 2026 over 2026. And we leave this alone here and uh, 
that one, that one, that one is done as well. Uh, more parts here, but the easiest way of doing this is to think very carefully again about how you're going to do the parts here. Um, e to the x cubed differentiates to 3x squared e to the x cubed. So let's break this 3x to the 5 out into x cubed times 3x squared, because now this whole thing here can be taken as just one of your parts and it integrates beautifully. And then this can be the thing that you just leave alone and then differentiate. So leave alone for x cubed and differentiate for 3x squared. Then integrate this a couple of times for e to the um, x cubed um, for this and then take away the mass integral. And what we notice, of course, because this thing itself differentiates to 3x squared, this just beautifully integrates once again and we end up with our answer relatively quickly. And the last of the semi-final integrals uh, was this one here. Um, we're supposed to, uh, there, there's a few ways you could do this, but the easiest way by far, again, is to use the zero equals one minus one trick and just say that this zero at the end is a one minus one like this. And then we can break the fraction in half here to leave this. And now this factorizes to two X plus one into two X plus one or two X plus one squared, which we can cancel down to make this whole thing be two X plus one to the power of three over two. And this is 2x plus 1 to the power minus a half. And then we can just integrate both these things with um, with some very easy um, reverse chain rule. Hopefully, hopefully that answer is right. I've probably made a mistake here somewhere. I wasn't too concerned about making mistakes because the competitors would, would probably just get it right anyway. And, and I could just check it and, and fix it anyway. So not too concerned about it. Anyway, now we get to the final integrals. Um, so these are a touch harder. But again, I was intending for people to be able to solve all of them. So they're not that hard. Um, sine squared of 2x can be written as sine of 2x all squared, so that's 2 sine x cos x all squared. Um, and then, of course, we can square everything for 4 sine squared cos squared, which goes with this cos to make cos cubed. Now, the trick when you're integrating things like this is not to replace this sine squared with minus cos squared, because then you end up integrating cos cubed and cos to 5, which is difficult. What you do is you take the odd one and you break that into a single term of itself and then the thing squared, which you then replace with one minus the other thing squared. And the reason this works is because this um, cos that you took out, um, hopefully because this was an odd power, is going to turn up in every term at the end when you expand out, which means reverse chain rule works really, really well. And you can just do it immediately and you'll end up with your answer. Um, so that's just a trick in case you ever see things that look like this. Um, next one, uh, again, we're going to use sort of zero equals one minus one tricks to try and build the dom denominator um, from the numerator. Uh, so if we write it like this, uh, we have um, I think this also flies up to this. And again, we can cut the integral in half here, um, which will give us this, which is just one plus this. And we notice that two X squared, sorry, that this here differentiates to two X minus two, which is exactly half of this thing here. So this is half of log of the bottom. And of course, one just integrates to X and we can get it done nice and easily. Five uh, C, this is the integral that, I, I took this integral from Madas and I kind of wish that I had um, edited it slightly such that the trick would be a little bit easier to spot um, because I think this trick is quite hard to spot and there isn't really any other way around it other than just being able to find this. There, there's much more complicated things you could try, but um, the trick here is to factorize. So you've got three brackets of sine plus cos on the bottom. If you factorize out um, cos from all three of those brackets, of course, if you factorize out cos from this, sine over cos is tan. And then cos over cos is one, so you end up with tan plus one. So if you do that three times with all three brackets, you'll end up with cos cubed, because there's three of them, into tan plus one all cubed. And now, of course, this cos and this cos cubed can cancel to make cos squared on the bottom. But actually, what I want to do is write that as sec squared on the top. Uh, you may have noticed that my favorite types of integrals are the ones that involve sec squared and tan. I just think they're really nice. I don't really know why. Um, I just think trying to spot them such that it works is, is really cool. But anyway, now this is just reverse chain, right? Because tan x plus 1 differentiates to sec squared. Um, so we've got a net power of negative 3 here. So we can just raise that power up to negative 2, divide by minus a half to cancel this down. And then the sec squared just lives here, which makes this all work quite nicely. So yeah, really hard to school, but I thought also really nice. Again, um, another one where we take this minus and we put it to the power up here. And then cos x to the minus 1 is, is sine. Um, and now what we want to do is write this cos over sine here, maybe on the top as, uh, as a cot, because if you know anything about the derivative of, or the integral, sorry, of cot, the integral is log sine, which means that log sine differentiates to cot, which means this answer is log of log of sine, um, is our final answer. Again, just a case of uh, fiddling with that to make it work. And the last one, um, this is the only one in the semis or the final that really kind of requires a substitution, uh, u equals log x. I tried not to make it too hard to spot because I, I just wanted this one to be a race 
between who could do the obvious substitution and then just do the working as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, we differentiate, we rearrange, I guess, um, and then we put everything in. Um, and then, of course, this is a easily recognized integral. I, I thought maybe even the competitors might just memorize the answer to this because it was probably going to come up. But it's one of those integrals by parts where you just have to go around a couple of times to end up with the same integral that you're trying to do in the first place. And then you can just divide by two after you've rearranged and you have your answer. So those are all the integrals. Um, uh, it seems like everyone had fun on the day. Uh, looking forward to doing it again next year as well.